And, uh, so let me just let me just start. I I believe that the Senate uh, is about to make a colossal mistake, and it reflects the fact that three months ago I had the privilege to announce a truly unprecedented opportunity, an unprecedented opportunity to welcome two professional sports teams to Virginia. The opportunity, as all of you know, which came together over many months of working very closely to represent the very best interests of the Commonwealth of Virginia, the very best interests of taxpayers, and to do it in a way that could put Virginia truly, truly in a position that we had a win, a big win for the Commonwealth. We had no upfront cash, none. No impact on our AAA credit rating. No new taxes. And in fact, revenues that otherwise will not be here are being used to finance part of the construction activity through bond issuances. We had the project positioned, the project can be done, and we can move forward. It creates 30,000 jobs and generates $12 billion of economic impact for the Commonwealth of Virginia. Billions in direct cash flow that flows right back into important priorities like transportation, transportation for WMATA, our metro system, transportation like I-81, education, toll relief, priorities that benefit the entire Commonwealth of Virginia. And this unique public-private partnership was approved unanimously, unanimously by the General Assembly's own Economic Approval Commission, MEI. It's been widely lauded as a sports financing deal unlike any other. And again, no upfront cash, no new taxes, and no impact to our borrowing capacity or credit rating, a public-private partnership where Virginia wins. It was truly and could truly be a monumental opportunity. Through this whole process, I have shown an absolute repeated willingness to consider many priorities of the General Assembly. On the very first day of the session, I was clear that I was open to toll relief for the residents of Hampton Roads and particularly Portsmouth and Norfolk. I have worked hard with Metro leadership on a business plan that would allow us to support Metro through their short-term cash crunch. Our team has worked tirelessly with Democrat legislators to amend bills throughout the session to find common ground. The Speaker and the House of Delegates took the time to learn about this project. They hired outside advisors to confirm its merits. They debated those merits in public and understood the historic opportunity that this would be for all Virginians. On the other hand, the Senate refused to give the single largest economic development deal in Virginia's history any serious, meaningful consideration, breaking their own long-standing tradition in the process and avoiding the broad bipartisan support in both houses. This bill would pass. And all along the way, casting aside 30,000 jobs and the $12 billion in new revenue that would flow not only to all the areas of the Commonwealth, but again, based on the fact that we were going to do something that is truly, truly transformative. They also cast away the revenue from this project that would reach every corner of the Commonwealth. Toll relief again for Hampton Roads, infrastructure improvements on I-81, investments in teachers, particularly in those more economically challenged areas in Virginia, and as I said, funding for Metro. The way the Senate has handled this opportunity, I fear, damages Virginia's business environment. It's a clear signal that opportunities to welcome new investment and jobs even ones of historic magnitude 
will not be evaluated on their merit, but instead will be viewed through the lens of partisan parochial interests. In fact, right now, there is a pipeline of economic development projects that are awaiting action by MEI. And the Senate hasn't even appointed their members to MEI. As I said, I believe this is a massive mistake for the Commonwealth. You see, over the course of the last two years, we've collectively seen what a vision of growth and opportunity can yield. We've worked together. The General Assembly, House and Senate, Republicans and Democrats, we have worked together in a bipartisan way to deliver historic tax, re tax relief, investments in education and in public safety, to overhaul behavioral health, to in fact drive Virginia to new heights and we've done it all on a bipartisan basis, all the while recognizing that it takes all of us to succeed. Sadly, I fear that we're about to see a budget that has tax increases in it and not tax decreases. At a time where $5 billion of tax relief over the last two years has been a meaningful catalyst to Virginia's success. We cannot go back on the tax relief that we have provided to so many Virginians. The bottom line is we have found a way to win, to win together. And when we win together, we see all of the elements that are required to win run on full cylinders, bringing down the cost of living, investing in education, making our neighborhoods safer, overhauling behavioral health making sure a government is efficient and a good steward of taxpayer money. We've gotten all that work done by working together. Listen, I'm an optimist. I am a true optimist. And I will never stop fighting for Virginia's success. I believe that our Senate and our General Assembly have a chance they have a chance to stand up and do what's right. They have a chance to assess this one-of-a-kind, first-of-its-kind economic development opportunity on the merits of the opportunity. And I will again repeat that the merits are truly, truly amazing. I've done a lot of work in my 30 years in business, and I think this may be the single best opportunity that I have ever seen. And it just befuddles me that we're not spending today talking about how to deliver it. And instead, I'm here trying to, again, convince our General Assembly to do what's right. They can fix this. They know they can fix this. But fixing it starts with a very, very important step. Fixing it starts with embracing the opportunity and recognizing that it truly can change so much of the Commonwealth's future. I thank you all for coming. I thanks for, thank you for standing out here and waiting for me. Again, I apologize for being late, and I'm happy to take a few questions. The next step is for the General Assembly, and particularly the Senate, to embrace the opportunity. It's their move. You know, I have, I have worked hard over the course of the last three, four months making sure that people understand the merits of the opportunity, and I have collaborated on many of the asks that they have made, but the most important thing that has to happen next is the Senate needs to embrace the opportunity and demonstrate they're willing to work on it. Yeah, I think there was a wonderful article today about one that in fact has exceeded expectations. This project's uniqueness is um, something that I'm not sure everybody has fully, fully embraced. Two teams moving at one time in one facility. Two teams who in fact will provide the anchor rent. Two teams that will play 88 games a year in one facility. There's never been anything like it. And those two teams playing 88 games a year underpin the whole project. That is something that again allows for revenue from parking, 
revenue from naming rights. In fact, the ticket tax that already exists on, on the tickets that are charged for people to attend, to attend events. We have, a, we have a fabulous, fabulous event hall and concert facility that would go with it. And of course, there's a ring fence around this that collects the taxes generated by the activities. Pretty sure it's in Milwaukee, but it was an article today about it. So, so first of all, let me just be let me just be clear. I have I have uh, strongly held beliefs on lots of topics that are being sent to me. Uh, I expect that there'll be over a thousand bills um, that are sent to me. Um, and I'm going to evaluate each bill. But I've been clear. I don't have any interest in the cannabis legislation. Um, I've, just, I've expressed that to people over and over again. And you know, at the end of the day, here we are talking about an opportunity, truly an opportunity, to bring 30,000 jobs, $12 billion of economic impact in the Commonwealth of Virginia, in the fastest growing, most dynamic area, which is sports and entertainment, and bluntly, you want to talk about putting a cannabis shop on every corner. I don't quite get it, honestly. Governor, to that point, will this rejection impact your decision-making process when reviewing those legislations, especially when it comes to cases that have been the Democratic priority, such as retail cannabis or minimum wage increase? So there were, a num there were a number of topics that we've discussed over the last few months that were part of an overall discussion of moving forward with, with uh, a, whole, a whole slew of topics that had bipartisan support. Um, there are a number of issues that folks are trying to drive that don't have bipartisan support. Um, this project has bipartisan support. Had it gotten to the floor, it would have passed. And that is a real challenge when, in fact, we have things that have broad bipartisan support that don't even get a hearing on the floor of our Senate. That's not right. It's just not right. And so, yes, the short answer is that there's been a lot of things that have been discussed that have been part of an overall broad discussion with regards to not just the monumental deal, but a lot of other things. And I think this really sets us meaningfully back. Dave Brent, right here. Dave, hey, Dave. What I, what I understand is that there are, there are, uh, there is a broad bipartisan group of House leadership and Senate leadership that want to move forward. Um, they're running into a, a single roadblock. What's the roadblock? Well, you know, Dave. So I do think this is a real challenge for us. We've got to find a way to come together and work as a bar bipartisan group. And most importantly, we often find ourselves on different sides on issues. This is why a bill like this should be heard. This is why the issues that need to be explained get a chance to be explained. And this is why I do believe that everybody who has dug into this particular issue has found it to be compelling, truly compelling. The House did the work. As I said, they hired outside experts to help them. They did the work into the forecast. They did the work into the structure, and they, uh, on a, on a broad bipartisan basis, support it. This is the challenge we've got. Let's do the work, let's do the work, and then let's include this bill in the budget that is being, uh, that's being uh, the, the conference report that's being presented today. And then let's give ourselves the next 30 days to work it out. That's what we should be doing right now, but instead we're not, and that's a real disappointment, and I believe that is, as I said earlier, a monumental mistake for the Commonwealth. Thank you. Thank you all so much. Okay. Take care.